Hi, Noreen. Hey. I love the shoes. I thought if you could tell me a little bit about the project and how it began and how you got into it would be great. Sure. Um, it actually technically started in um, 2000, 2001. I had a fellowship to go to Cyprus and I did a lot of research and some video installations about Aphrodite. And one of the, the kind of little blurbs I came across was that in antiquity the priestesses of Aphrodite were prostitutes, right? All prostitution, whether you were a high-end escort or a low-end streetwalker, you were a devotee of Aphrodite. So the porni, or the women who would walk the streets, would wear leather sandals with tacks in the bottom that would spell out, follow me. So they would leave these dusty footprints in, you know, the streets of Athens or wherever to solicit customers. So in a way, as, you know, Ed, one of my the tech lead was saying, it's sort of an early hack, right? Um, so I really wanted to make shoes that would address, would both reference these follow me sandals from antiquity, but also address the real concerns of contemporary sex work. So we didn't just want to make another pair of follow me sandals, we really tried to sort of update them, make them contemporary, and I did a lot of social research actually, talking with sex workers, sex workers' rights advocates, and really trying to figure out what really made sense to put in these shoes. So we have, a, I think this is our fourth version now, and we're really happy because this is also our, our first DIY version. So instructions for how to make these shoes are actually going to come out and make in the fall. So, okay, let's we'll see. Tell me about Yeah, so you can see, and I'll do the audio alarm first. So this shoe actually has an audible alarm system built into it. So there's a siren which costs six dollars from Radio Shack, nine volt battery, and a switch also from Radio Shack, and it's really loud. Right? So once you hit it, you can actually leave it on. But the women that I spoke with, um, you know, would carry sometimes mace or knives or any other thing to, to defend yourself, but those would get used against them. So one of them suggested to me, what about an audible alarm system, right? That would be really loud, call attention to the person who doesn't want to have attention called to them, right? And couldn't get used against them. Um, and the other shoe here has a video screen, which is for promotion. We found that, you know, women, even women who have very little stability in their lives still wanted repeat customers and would still kind of wear crazy outfits and do other things to help people remember them, basically. So promotion seemed to be also an important issue. So we put in a video screen, which is an iRiver Clicks portable media player that you can put your own video on to, so you can have your own phone number, images, whatever you want scrolling across it. And that just fits basically into the back of the heel. So to make the little casings for the electronics, that was one of our biggest challenges, we ended up using this material called Shape Lock, which is really incredibly fantastic. So it melts at 130 degrees, so you can actually mold with it, right? But it dries super hard. It's actually hard enough for somebody to put their weight on. So you can take your not very expensive foam filled platform shoe, carve out the heel, make a little mock-up, right, out of balsa wood for the space where the video player or your audio components are gonna go, and then you fill it with shape lock, right, and sand it down so that it's smooth and it fits the side of the shoe. So you can see here, right, this is the shape lock. And we just drilled, once it's done, right, it's plastic, so you can actually drill into it. So we just drilled some holes for magnets. And we actually used an old razor blade on the side that we had actually hollowed down to make a nice little enclosure that will keep your shoe. That's pretty cool. Safe. Thanks. I'm really excited because for the first time this is actually feasible to really have people make, right? Our kind of other versions were a little too elaborate. We used laser cutters and other tools that not everybody has, but these you can make yourself at home. And obviously, you know, it, the inspiration for them came from this kind of social sculpture project about sex work, but obviously anybody can make these, which is part of what can be really great, right? And they sort of become, you know, inspired by antiquity, then they're sort of safety shoes for sex workers, because they can also be safety and fun shoes for anybody. So where would you like to take it? So where would you like um, to take it? Well, obviously, the, it really came out of, as I said, sort of a social sculpture project, so that's really kind of my main interest. But I'm also very happy to send them out into the world because you also don't want to necessarily mark people as sex workers. So nope. it would be great to have lots of people wearing these shoes. And, 
Let's we'll see what people do. This will yeah, be nice. Exactly. So, you know, I mean, at the end of the day, I just feel like I'm, I'm more interested in ask, asking questions than proposing answers, which I feel like is my job as an artist. Oh, thank you so much. You're very this welcome. is great.